Hello, yes, this is your girl, Queen of Commentary, and we are back with another video. Yes, oh, today we are talking about Latif, the husband of Jezza, I mean, so, so Chanel. Yes, but before we get into it, you know what to do. Thumbs up this video, subscribe if you have not already cut your notifications on, and leave us a comment. Now, you guys, I posted a video yesterday of a uh, commentary of So So Chanel's post. And voila, we got another post written by So So Chanel on her husband's page. Honey, we not stupid here and we reveal the truth. Uh, Latif did not write this. His wife did, okay? But, you know, they're screaming for help. They want to know what Miss Jenna uh, thinks. How do I know this? Because someone went under my other video, of which I deleted, because they, they put some words in there that is not acceptable. But they was like, oh my goodness, I'm praying for uh, Latif, uh, who is So So Chanel's husband, because he tried to go to the upper room. Oh yeah, I said, oh really? Okay, I had already read it, you know. Just to let y'all know, I am not even up out of my bed. This is what, 7 in the morning, me recording this uh-huh and i just felt like you know of course this is my assignment but now i feel like you know they actually wanted me to do this commentary on them because i feel like they need the therapy you know they probably can't afford to go to therapy therapy is expensive i know where <laughs> look i know how they feel therapy is expensive that's why I, I read my bible because that's the best therapy in the world um but yeah so this is my gift to the Latifs and the So So Chanel's. I don't know if they're still together, guys. They're struggling, as we all are. But I'll do, you know, I'll break this down as truthfully and as respectfully as possible. Okay? Now, these are his words. I'm just letting you guys know, Latif, if you are listening to this, So So Chanel, if you are listening to this, I had to take some words out. Okay? Because there's certain words that I will not say and cannot say and don't want to say. Because when you say certain words, you give it life. Okay? Long post alert. This is Latif supposedly talking, but we know it's not. Because, I mean, she said a long time ago that he is, um, you know, he has problems uh, conveying words. And, you know, she's so slick as a Jezebel is. She even puts some darn... Uh, typos in here to throw us off but you can't throw me off okay long post alert I decided to tell my own story before I allowed it to be told from anyone else's perspective and I will be correcting it because you won't have me sounding like a third grader okay I decided to tell my own story before I allowed it to be told from anyone else's perspective. This was the sure giveaway that this was a message to me to break it down. First of all, I can't tell nothing that you never told. If you never typed this, I would have never known it, nor with social media. Okay? No one can tell your story unless it's out there. On 2-4-24, while playing golf with my brother, I was having a rough time. I was in the midst of a storm and I got emotional. I shared some things with him that I was struggling with and I admitted to him that I wanted to visit the upper room. I was tired and didn't ask. I didn't think I had anything left. First of all, you don't have anything left unless you have Jesus. I don't know why y'all running away from him. And guess what? Jesus ain't going to necessarily chase you down because he's right there with you. You in a mirror, he right there. You sinning, he right there. In the midst of wanting to go to the upper room, guess what? He was right there. By the way, this is my personal uh, thoughts on this. Latif was not wanting to go to the upper room because if he did want to go to the upper room, he wouldn't have said anything. I've known people that I've talked to within one day. The next day I heard that they checked in into the upper room. People don't give you warnings. If you give a warning, you know, like Fantasia, she went and she told somebody that she wanted to go to the upper room. And she's still here singing for the devil. Yeah, I said it. 
Okay? My point is, he did not want to go to the upper room. So I don't feel sorry or anything. He wanted help, though. Now, Latif, if you are, ta- if you are listening to this and, and your wife, you both have Jezebel spirits. Oh, yeah, Jezebel's not just for the fairer of them all. Okay, or it could be in the not so fair. Okay, yeah, for both. Yeah, you both had Jezebel spirits. Why? Because I've been doing these darn so so Chanel Chronicles for going on two years now. Okay, yeah, two years. And all y'all doing is making it worse for yourself. Now, I already said the marriage that y'all in is false. God is not nowhere in it. Okay, not nowhere in it. He's not blessing it. He's not going to bless it until you guys admit, repent, not to the world, not to your social media, because nobody reading this, including me, can save you. The only one who can save you is your maker, Jesus. You have to private, privately, something you guys don't know nothing about. You have to privately repent. When you privately repent, it will publicly show. When God has delivered you from something, you no longer have to talk about it. You're not there. You're not looking for pity. You're not looking for likes, shares, or comments. You will privately go through whatever you're going through because you don't need the world to see it. Now, I'm trying to be as nice as possible, but yet I'm being stern, okay? Because that's my job. God is stern, but loving. So this commentary is coming from a loving space. Once you say that you want to go to the upper room and you've given up, you have furthermore said that your God is your wife, your situation, your job. Just like a few months ago or a long time ago, so Chanel said, T said that or feels that she is his God. No, that was Jezebel speaking. Okay? Latif, you need to get away from that Jezebel spirit because it's feeding your Jezebel spirit. Think about it. Every time you guys get together, you, something happens. One time, she said you were on the road for weeks. Come home and then you nearly took your darn ram truck and took somebody else And had them up in the upper room. Y'all know what I'm talking about because you haven't mentioned it since. That insurance went up, didn't it? Went way up. Probably got all kinds of God darn points, didn't you? Insurance went up. You know, y'all running, running, running. Can't run away from these demons because they're on you. Okay? They on you. You have to get delivered. All right? Wow. I was having a rough time. I shared some things with him. I was struggling. Uh Uh-huh. I was tired and didn't think I had anything left. You don't. Okay? Only God can fill those voids. I said I was fighting off that day. That's what I said. Okay? Yeah. He he said basically, yeah, he wanted to go to the upper room. My big brother did exactly what a big brother and public service officer uh, supposed to do. He hugged me and said he loved me. 46 years that has never happened between us. He packed up everything and said, let's go. At that moment, I don't think I realized exactly what was about to happen and the chain of events it would start. But he took me to a hospital and admitted me. Now, wow. Let me let me say this. He did the best he could. I understand because you know what? If you're not a professional, okay? There's nothing else you can do but do that. But um, Latif, that's why you need God. Because he took you to a hospital. That hospital could have done whatever. Could have made it worse. Could have made it. I don't know. But the hospital that you really need to go to. Or he really needs to go to. Is the hospital of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. He needs to be washed in the river of Jordan. Needs to be pulled back up and dunked again. He needs to be dunked three times. During the near. Darn near as many times as he almost thinks he's going to go up to the upper room. Because, see, that's what baptism is. The old you passes away and then you become a new creature. See, when you get pulled up out that darn Jordan River, this could be spiritually, figuratively, or whatever. You are a new person. You need to understand that the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can save you. 
not social media, not your wife, not your children, not your status. Nothing else can save you but the blood of Jesus. Stop running away. Stop running away from that. Don't be scared. The most, um, okay. Probably the best thing he could have done for me. It was the best thing because he too probably isn't saved. What he should have done if he was a if he was a child of God or a Christian or or, or a server of God, he would have laid hands on you. He would have prayed with you first. Okay, prayer. Okay, what he did was he could have he took you from your own house of demons and took you to a whole paradise of demons. There's so many demons everywhere. He should have prayed, but see he couldn't do that because he didn't know. Okay. I spent over 24 hours in there. The most uncomfortable experience I have ever had in my life. I'm sure. I'm sure. So next time you have an issue, get on your knees and pray. Okay? You have to get on your knees and pray and stop going to man for help. Man can't do anything for you, but do what they did for you. Okay? In those 24 hours, I had plenty of time to think about how... Uh, how did I get here and why am I here? Well, you know why you there. You told you told another demon about your business. And then they took you to a hospital. And that and then you probably left the same or if not worse. Sound like you went to jail, sir. I was sitting in here. You get what I'm saying? Just like a few months ago they claimed that, you know, um, they went to what is it? Uh y'all gotta watch the social social chronicles that they went to marriage counseling. You get what I'm saying? They didn't go to marriage counseling. I think she was placed in a hospital. You get what I'm saying? And so they both in and out of the hospital, in and out of the hospital. Oh, by the way, this story doesn't tell me not to do this. This tells me more because you're on the brink of your redemption and your breakthrough. You got to understand that if God wanted you up in the upper room, you would have been there. But you're not there. You're still talking. You're still spreading this, this stuff. Now, now this story is not as bad as how the wife would have put it on her page. You get what I'm saying? But um, yeah, you you need help, but you need you need what is it called? Divine help. You need you need God's help. You need to allow God to do what He's supposed to do, which is to make you a new creature. Okay, make you a new person. You need to let all that other stuff pass away. All those demons. Oh my gosh, can you imagine when y'all were out there? You know, swinging from the trees and things like that. Do you know how many demons you are carrying around? So you got your own demons. And then everybody that y'all allowed in your bedroom, demons is just nestling in your vessel. And it's getting tired. You said you're getting tired and you had nothing left. It's because those demons, those spirits, those soul ties are draining you, sir and ma'am. Do you know you carrying around all kinds of demons? See, the earth want to call it schizo and mental this. No, no, no. In the God's realm or God's um, camp, we call that demonic. You're possessed. And when those demons want to get out of you, oh, it'll make you do whatever. Okay? Including wanting to do that. Okay? Um, let's see, honestly, I got a lot of answers that day. It's true. When you are down, you will find out who has your back. And I also found out that hitting rock bottom is sometimes not that bad. Uh, well, what? No, hitting rock bottom is, is not good. It's something that you want to hurry up and get up off. We've all been there. And when I hit rock bottom or when I hit, you know, have to... Uh, start over. I ask God, please guide me. Another thing, you have to pray correctly. Now, God answers prayers of his people. I noticed that his wife, you know, always talks about, oh, God got blessings for me and he, he owes me this and he owes me that and I'm going to do whatever I need to get him. God is not a genie. He only works for his people. So if you are not his people, he's not going to work for you. Okay, he gonna give you the he gonna give you just enough to keep you here, so you can understand who he is and who you belong to. And until you honor him and literally, you know, fast from your flesh. Okay, I think a prophet Montgomery says for you to really get into what God wants you to do, you have to fast. You have to disintegrate your flesh she doesn't use that term but the term that she used i'm not going to use on this channel you have to literally get rid of your flesh to get your spirit right 
Okay, and that's usually fasting from food, which I am doing now. I am actually on an intermittent fast. I am fasting from certain things to heal certain things because to do these spiritual um, videos, I cannot be full of food and things like that. I have to be, um, my, my body can't be digesting while I am doing these things. I have to be uh, closer to God and that's how you do, that's how you um, get closer to him is by fasting. Certain things can only be done through fast and not fasting from TV, social media, or whatever. Fasting from food, okay? Why do you, why do you say it's only up from there? I discovered over the years I've compromised and given myself to others because I thought that is what a man does. Well, now I'm going to find my definition. I'm going to find my definition of that word for myself, not for anyone else. So I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. Go to the Bible. This is this is your assignment, and it's anybody. It's not just for Latif and So So Chanel. This is for anybody who is, you know, um, listening to this. God has all the definitions of what we're supposed to do and be. Okay, like I talk about all the time. Proverbs 31, woman, and Proverbs 31, woman. Or Proverbs 31, it talks about what a woman, what a man should be looking for in a woman. And he also, I don't know the verse, but you guys can look that up yourself. Google, what does God want a man to be? Okay, don't go to no book. Don't go to the book, Happy Days or Here Again, The Skies Above, whatever book she's been reading. Happy Days, she hasn't been happy since. Okay, because see, there's demonic warfare going on in even the books people are writing. You got to be careful of who, what books you read. I only read Christian-based books. Books that are based on God. That's what I read. Those are safe. Okay? When I when I want to get clarity on something. Now, I, I, I read goosebumps and scary books. But I'm talking about I read things. When I want to get spiritually fed, I go to Christian-based books. Okay? All right. So, I'm not ashamed or embarrassed. We know you're prideful. Okay, very prideful. Pride means I want to put everything out there so I can what? Spread the news. Spread the misery. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just having a human experience. And this is why I know that she wrote this because this is how So So Chanel talks. Stop writing for this man. Okay, stop. I don't know what kind of games y'all playing. I don't know if this is on purpose, but it's not cute. And we are pulling back the layers here. This is So So Chanel typing this. Okay, I'm just having a human experience, and sometimes it is always it isn't always great. <clears throat> Best believe I will be grateful when the sun rays start shining again on me. Just as grateful as I am. The wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, because this is not written correctly. Best believe I will be grateful when the sunshine starts shining again. Honey, the sun has never stopped shining, nor will the moon. You guys don't control anything, okay? The sun will always shine whether you are walking on earth or you're lying up underneath it. See, these people feel like the world just basically revolves around them. That's that Leviathan and that, and that Jezebel spirit. As I am to feel raindrop falling on my skin right now. Mm -hmm. I also know something did happen that day. A piece of me... Um, a piece of me let me take that on now a piece of me teeth uh went away a social a social media handle i have been i have been needed here oh my lord see i don't know who wrote this to be honest now all this stuff maybe they co-wrote it together i have been okay basically what Ah, mm. y'all, you know what? This is written so bad, I'm not going to even show this in the video. Y'all just going to have some pictures turning because this is ridiculous. Y'all see it even, oh my goodness, it even, it even scrambled me up. I have been needed Okay, basically he's saying that he want to change. That's basically what they saying. So let me reintroduce myself. My name is Hove. 
H to the O V. I used to push snowflakes like the O G. <laughs> he tried to write this like they told him, Lord. They tried to write this. I swear that's what he said. He said, "Let me reintroduce myself. My name is Latif." The meaning of Latif is kind, elegant, one of a kind, and mild nature. You none of these, sir. And then say Egyptian. The Egyptians, they worship idols, okay? That's what my mommy named me. Now, this part I will put in there. That's what my mommy named me. I swear that's what they did, y'all. Y'all go to their, their page if you want to see this. I don't feel like putting this kindergarten writing up in my darn video teeth if this is really how you talk please go back to school you want to know why you wanted to do whatever you wanted to do it's because you have an idle mind and what they say about idle minds is a devil paradise you might be 46 but you can still learn the day we stop learning is the day that the brain starts to atrophy atrophy means get weak okay I'm going to need you to go back to school. That's probably why your Jezebel wife always feel like she's better than you. Because you got problems talking. Now, I know she wrote this and made it look real bad. So we can really think that you cannot talk or write. And I refuse to believe that. By the way, please do not make any more charcuterie boards in your wife's um, video. And wear gloves. Don't let her pull you into her darn antics. You need to rise up and become the man that God wants you to be. And you know what the man that God wants you to be? Go ahead and read Proverbs. Proverbs 5 and 6. Let me say chapters 5 and 6. I got to talk in Bible lingo here. Because I didn't want y'all to think it's chapter 5, five verse 6. So it's chapter 5 and 6. First of all, God wants y'all to be a man like a lion. Know how to look at a woman and see if she's good or bad. And you can't do that by being in bed with her. You can only do that by being on your feet and looking from afar. You in Jezebel's camp, sir. You know, you're not supposed to sniff her flowers or be in her garden. And you all up in there freaking making weeds with her for the last umpteenth years. Okay? And I hope y'all not related more than your darn marriage certificate. Oh, yeah. All that needs to be delivered because God's not behind none of that mess. Okay? He who have an ear, let him hear. That's what my mommy named me. And that's who I am. He is still here. I am a... She said the word... I can't say it, y'all, because it can be misconstrued. But y'all know her favorite D word. Photographer in all aspects. And I am only getting better. I know that will take my places that will take me places i didn't imagine until now i work hard for what i want and i'm a father yeah but are you a husband you, what happened sir you're not a husband you're not you're not because y'all broke the covenant the first time y'all went in that club and and somebody uh what did she say uh oh teeth let his god down oh yeah i was in that video and my husband and I looked at each other and said, What? Teeth let his guard down. Teeth never had his guard up because he wouldn't have had he wouldn't have been in there. Get yourself together, sir. You've been warned. You know what I mean? If you haven't thoughts like that, that means those those things, those demons inside of you are really winning. Because see, the devil comes here still and destroy. And it don't all happen at one time. It can happen over decades. Before anything happens and goes down, before your assignment is done. Because, see, we have to decide who we going to work for. Are we going to work for the devil or are we going to work for God? Okay? Before your assignment is done with the devil, he going to make sure that you are obliterated. Okay? You're the first person I ever had to use that word for. Obliterated. I don't even know what the word means. It just sounds good. So, maybe the day if God wants me to tell my story... You just told your story. Please stop dragging God into this. God had nothing to do with this story. Now, of course, God made us his children be able to take a lemon and make lemonade. And that's what I'm doing. I'm making lemonade. You told your story, sir or ma'am. Okay? So maybe. But it's not a good story. But this story is helping somebody. Trust me. That's why we do the Social Chanel Chronicles. 
God wants me to tell my story, I will. But right now, he just wants me to heal. Well, honey, you're not going to heal out in public. It's been a long, winding road to get here. And I still have far to go. You sure about that? You sure about that? Get yourself together today, okay? I didn't post this for pity or support. To what the heck you post this for? Huh. For self? God got me. And then I got me. No, you ain't got jack. You just said you wanted to do something to yourself. You ain't got nothing. Okay? I feel that God got me. But you darn sure ain't got nothing. Because you don't. You got all them demons inside you. Both of y'all. Jezebel and Leviathan. Striking again. Okay? If I could, I would rename this whole series Jezebel and Leviathan. Because you guys are the poster childs of those things. I'm just removing any negative power that may exist over me. Huh? You can't remove Jack. Only God can do that. I learned that along the journey, saying it aloud removes it power. Pastor Mike Todd, we harvesting. It's harvesting. Looks like you copy and paste this. How you copy and paste and still it's got some typos. Y'all, let me get out of here. The moral of the story is this. The devil gives you all you want just to get you to want to go into the upper room at the end. Is it worth it? Huh? Y'all got to give up all these earthly things to really get the real healing from God. God, thanks for getting to this part of the video. Oh, by the way, if there's any supporters under here of this darn Leviathan and Jezebel story, keep your darn words, okay? Because, honey, I don't even, if it's too much, I don't even read it. I delete it and keep it moving. We on a mission here. We try to save souls in God's camp. God is straightforward, okay? He's straightforward. He's not all around. He's not a winding God. He's a straightforward God. We're here to save souls here. Not just Leviathan and Jezebel slash so so Chanel and Latif. No, no, no. It's not just about them. It's about anybody listening to it, all right? All right, y'all have a good one.